Be sure to take everything out of your pockets. Oh no, no, you don't have a pocket, man? You gotta find a pocket. Yeah, look in there. That might have a pocket in there. Oh no. Yo, Lisa, Lisa, he's in the bag. Lisa, he went in the bag. Oh, that was somebody else's bag. Ugh, and he's an artist. Those are the worst. What are you, sketching the dryer? Just give him a pocket, man. Give him a pocket. I'm just gonna leave him there. Leave him there all alone, abandoned. Don't worry, Corduroy, somebody's coming. Someone will get you a pocket. Oh, it's Lisa. Lisa's gonna give you a pocket, I bet. Yep, okay, you got a pocket, cool. Spoiler, he gets a pocket. There's a picture of him with the pocket right on the front. It's not that much of a spoiler. Anyway, now I can use that in the thumbnail. Since we're wasting time here at the top of the video, let me just get this out of the way too. Please like the video if you haven't already. I mean, we're already a few seconds in. I don't know why you haven't clicked the little thumbs up button. Subscribe, click the notification bell and all. And hey, if you want to support us at httpchristian.com, please feel free to do so. Now to the actual video. We've gotten a few comments over the years asking us to do a video on Mike Gendron. Craig Sherman or Craig's Herman. I don't know if this is a person named Craig Sherman or a guy named Herman who belongs to someone named Craig. Anyway, they write, Hey Ferris, I hope that one day you can do a video on the anti-Catholic Mike Gendron. I have been posting your videos in the chat of his videos. I hope we can lead people to Christ's church. God bless you. Patrick and Cayman says, Second that, he's definitely produced many visceral videos against Catholics. C Hint Agata one says, Mike Gendron needs your help. Reddish Brown Horse says, How about a Christian versus Protestant on Mike Gendron? They put out tons of videos, which if you know how to be a Christian already, you will recognize as false, that I fear many take as true. And 98 Rushul says, please do a video on Mike Gendron. Have you ever heard of Mike Gendron? He's anti-Catholic. Look him up and you can make 10 videos about the garbage he teaches. Now we've been aware of Mike Gendron for a while, but it hasn't been a priority for us to make a video on him because as 98 Rushul's mentioned, Mike's teachings are garbage. And as Reddish Brown Horse mentioned, if you know how to be a Christian already, you'll recognize that Mike's videos teach falsely. Currently, Mike Gendron's content is only effective on people who don't have much of an education in Christianity. That doesn't mean that they're not smart people, it just means they don't have much of an education in Christianity. That's not a topic that they've studied yet. If they were to do some research into the faith, though, they'd quickly realize that Mike Gendron is, and I think this is the correct theological terminology for it, um, he's full of crap. Anyway, in this video, we're not going to be focusing on Mike's plethora of false teachings, because we think there's a more interesting thing to focus on when it comes to Mike Gendron. Now, if you would like to watch a video that refutes Mike Gendron's false teachings, then we'd recommend this one by Joe Heschmeyer of the Shameless Popery Podcast. We have the link to that in the description, and it's also up there in the card. Today, though, what we're going to be focusing on is Mike Gendron, the storyteller. That's why I had the book. I was reading it like, like a storyteller would do. That's why we put it in the thumbnail. Do you all understand the connections that are being made now? This is very creative stuff. Much more creative than this stupid artist who's doodling a dryer. Do y'all see that? Y'all see that, kids? Everybody? Cool. Okay. Yeah, so Mike Gendron is a bit of a storyteller, and he has a few stories that he tends to tell over and over again. For instance, Mike likes to tell a story about how he was supposedly a practicing Catholic. Mike, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, sure, Todd. I was born into a very devout Roman Catholic family, and I practiced the religion for 35 years until I began reading the Bible for the first time. As a Catholic, I had never opened the Bible. I came out of a very devout Roman Catholic family. In oh. fact, my, my uncle was a Roman Catholic priest for 58 years. And Your uncle? That's right. <laughs> my life as a Catholic was a very religious life. I too was a very devout Catholic. I was taught by the Jesuits all the way through high school and altar boy for seven years. And that was my life as a Catholic never opening the Bible. Now, you're saying that you were a very devout Catholic. That means you went to Mass regularly? Not only regularly, but I went every day during Lent while I was in college. At the age of 35, I opened the Bible for the first time. I had a, a large Bible. You've probably seen the, co the Catholic coffee table version. It's, uh, I think, 11 by 14. And all it did was sit on my coffee table collecting dust. I never opened it for 35 years. But you were really active. You were really involved. You were taught by Jesuits. And you're telling me that despite all that involvement, you never had really gotten into the Bible and read it. So Mr. Gendron claims that he was a practicing Catholic for 35 years. Yet he apparently never read the Bible in that time. And depending on the day, Mike might say that he never read the Bible for 35 years or 37 years. I can tell you for 37 years as a Catholic, I never opened the Bible. At the age of 35, I opened the Bible for the first time. It doesn't really matter if it was 35 or 37. The point is, Mike tells this story about how he was a practicing Catholic who never read the Bible. Now, don't get me wrong. You can be a practicing Catholic and go your entire life without ever reading the Bible. 
That's a possibility. You can be saved and go to heaven and never once have read the Bible. That's a possibility. Maybe you have poor vision and you're not able to read, or maybe you're illiterate, or maybe you're just not much of a reader. It is totally possible to be a practicing Catholic who has never once read the Bible. But nowadays, and in the days when Mike Gendron was supposedly a practicing Catholic, you cannot be a practicing Catholic who never once heard readings from the Bible. With the exception, of course, for people who are hearing impaired. But as far as I know, Mike Gendron is not hearing impaired to the point where he would not be able to hear readings from the Bible. So even if Mike was too lazy to read the Bible for himself, as a practicing Catholic, if he actually was a practicing Catholic like he says, then he definitely heard Bible readings quite often. We'll explain that more in detail in a minute. First though, let's listen to why Mike claims he never read the Bible for himself. But you were really active. You were really involved. You were taught by Jesuits. And you're telling me that despite all that involvement, you never had really gotten into the Bible and read it. Well, I was discouraged to read it. I never opened it for 35 years because the priest said it's too difficult to understand. Don't even bother to read it. You know, I always had a Bible. I was sitting on a coffee table collecting dust. I never opened it because the priest said it was too difficult to understand. And I had many different priests. My dad was an army colonel. We traveled all over the world. Every two years, we were under a different priest, and they all said the same thing. So I never opened it. It sat on my coffee table mm -hmm. collecting dust, but we were told never to try to read it or understand it because it was too difficult that we needed a priest to interpret it for us. All right, so Mike's reason for never reading the Bible was because other people told him to never read the Bible. And Mike just listened to him. Smart. Smart guy. All right, well, we know that Mike is leaving out some details here. Like, Mike never tells us when he was told these things, and that's kind of important since he's saying for 35 years or 37 years, he went without reading the Bible because people told him not to. But if these people never told him this till he was like 12 years old, then what about before that? What was keeping him from reading the Bible then? I mean, when I was a little kid, I had a Bible. I could have read the Bible. I didn't. Not much, at least. But that was my choice. I'm not blaming that on people who said, hey, never read the Bible. I was more than welcome to read my own Bible. And it's not like I didn't read it at all, but I didn't read it much. And it wasn't just because it was the Bible, it was just because it was a book and we have movies. So I'd rather watch a movie than read a book. We actually had VHS tapes of Bible stories, so I'd watch those. But yeah, growing up, I didn't read the Bible much on my own, but I did have it read to me. And I was well aware of the fact that I could go pick up my Bible and read it on my own. But Mike Gendron's telling a story here, and I think the point of his story is, oh, when I was a Catholic, I wasn't allowed to read the Bible. They didn't let me. I wanted to. I really wanted to read it. It was there on my coffee table collecting dust, and I was like, oh, oh, Bible, I wish I could open you up and read you. But these eyes, these eyes are not allowed to peer upon my wisdom. Clearly, Mike just didn't want to read the Bible. But he's trying to spin it now to be like, hey, I didn't read it because I was Catholic and they told me not to. Mike, even if all that were true, why didn't you dust your Bible off? I always had a Bible. I was sitting on a coffee table collecting dust. All it did was sit on my coffee table collecting dust. It sat on my coffee table mm -hmm. collecting dust. Even though you weren't allowed to read it, why did you let it sit there on the coffee table and collect dust? Why not clean it up? Show some respect for a holy book. Or did these people who told you never to read the Bible and never try to understand it also say, and don't dust it either. Don't touch the thing. It's like the Ark of the Covenant. Your face will melt off. In case it wasn't obvious, I don't believe that anyone actually told Mike this. I think this is just a story that Mike's making up. That being said, if I'm wrong and someone actually did tell Mike this, I'd be curious how old Mike was when they told him this. Because unless they told him this as he was exiting the womb, like, hey buddy, welcome to the world. Don't read the Bible. Get out of here. That was Mike's dad shoving the crazy person out of the hospital room. Anyway, unless that was told to Mike really early on, he can't use that as his excuse for never reading the Bible for 35 to 37 years. That being said, even if someone did tell Mike Gendron this, that's a stupid thing in itself. If someone said that to Mike and this is actually what they said to him, then they gave Mike bad advice. This is not a Catholic Christian teaching. This has never been a Catholic Christian teaching. The Catholic Christian teaching on the topic is for all the Christian faithful to frequently read the divine scriptures. And we'll look at that in more detail in a minute. But the point is, if someone told Mike this, then they were not telling him something that was Catholic Christian. They were giving their own personal belief, and what they told him is complete nonsense. It's actually very obvious complete nonsense, which makes it very strange that Mike Gendron went 35 to 37 years following this advice, never reading his Bible because some random people told him this nonsense. Again, I don't actually think that anyone ever told Mike this. I think this is a story that Mike is making up now to try to sell his the Catholic Church is so bad routine. But let's go with it a minute. Let's pretend Mike's story is true here. If what Mike is telling us is 100% true, then you know what else is true? Mike Gendron heard this, this ridiculous advice, and Mike Gendron decided to follow this advice 
this ridiculous advice for 35 to 37 years. And remember, this advice did not come with any support from Catholic Christian teaching, which means that if Mr. Gendron's story is actually true, if a priest or priest told Mike to never read his Bible, then they did so while not citing to him any Catholic Christian teaching that would support what they were saying. So Mike was literally just taking their word for it. And because of that, Mike Gendron decided not to read his Bible for 35 years. I mean, he could have taken 35 seconds and just asked any one of these priests, hey, can you show me in Catholic Christian teaching where this whole never read your Bible thing is taught? At which point the priest or priests would have been unable to supply any such citations, and Mike could have said, well, thank you for your time. I'm going to go do my own research now because I don't want to do something stupid, like not read my Bible for 35 years based on something you told me that you can't even support with facts. So yeah, that's what happens if Mr. Gendron's story is true. And I really want people to think about that. Like, do not let Mike Gendron off the hook for this. If his story is true, then he believed what a priest told him simply because the priest told him. Which is fine for like maybe a week or a month, but for 35 years to never go back and ask, hey, where did this teaching come from? How can I verify this? That says more about Mike than it does about these priests. Because yeah, if priests told Mike this, then those priests were wrong. But if Mike believed it for 35 years without even taking a second to verify what they were saying was true, that's on Mike. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to realize that this is bad advice. Before the Lord saved me, I was a rocket scientist down at Cape Kennedy, Florida. Yeah, well Mike, this isn't rocket science. This is clearly nonsense. Because consider the other parts of Mike's story. He said he was a practicing Catholic. And he also claims to have went to Mass not only weekly, but also every day during Lent. Now, you're saying that you were a very devout Catholic. That means you went to Mass regularly? Not only regularly, but I went every day during Lent while I was in college. Now, during the Mass, several readings are read to you or sung to you, or in some way, readings get to you from the Bible. There are three very obvious readings read to you per Mass on the weekend. And remember, this is every weekend Mass that Mike is attending for 35 years, or 37 years whichever story he's going with today. On top of that, he was also read to from the Bible at daily masses. So let's lowball this. We'll take 35 years instead of 37, and each year has 52 weekends, and each weekend Mike is hearing at a minimum three readings from the Bible. So three readings times 52 weekends times 35 years gives us 5,460 times that the Bible was read to Mike Gendron. Which means that if Mike Gendron's story is 100% true, then at the very least, Mike Gendron heard 5,460 readings from the Bible before his common sense kicked in. What do I mean by that? Well, let's look at the situation. If Mike Gendron is telling the truth, if he was told this thing by some random people and Mike believed this thing, yet he also was a practicing Catholic who went to church and heard readings from the Bible over 5,000 times, if Mike's story is completely true and not just some stupid lie he made up, then that means that Mike Gendron was sitting in church, being read to from the Bible, multiple times, at least three times a week, sometimes more. And yet all the while, Mike Gendron is sitting there, being read to from the Bible, thinking, oh man, I can't read that book that they're reading to me. Let that sink in for a minute, especially if you're someone who actually believed Mike Gendron. If you believe Mike Gendron, then you believe a guy who is hearing the Bible read to him multiple times for 35 to 37 years. And yet in his head, he thought, Hey, they're reading to me from a book, that's okay, but I can't go pick up that same book and read it myself. That's a no-no. God wouldn't like that. Okay, to be fair, maybe he didn't think that God wouldn't like it, but he didn't think these random people who told him to never read the Bible would be okay with him reading the Bible. But then again, I guess it would make sense that he would think that God wouldn't like it, because why would he just listen to those random people if he was like, those random people don't like it. I don't know if God doesn't like it, but those random people don't like it, so I'm not going to do it. Like, who cares what these people say? If you think God would be okay with you reading the Bible, read the Bible. But yeah, if you believe Mike Gendron, then you're believing a guy who had the Bible read to him multiple times, and yet he thought, they can read to me, I cannot read from that book that they're reading to me. And it took him 35 to 37 years to realize, hey, something don't make sense here. So that's what I mean by his common sense didn't kick in. Mr. Gendron, if you're watching, 35 to 37 years is about 34 to 36 years and 364 days too long to realize that this doesn't make any sense. Is your story actually true? Did you actually believe that you should never read the Bible while the Bible was being read to you weekly at Mass? Is that really why your Bible was collecting dust on your coffee table? Or did you just not want to read the Bible? Because if we do believe your story, then isn't the logical conclusion to your story that a rocket scientist thought that he was not allowed to read the Bible, but he could have the Bible read to him? 
And that rocket scientist did not realize the discrepancy in this for 35 to 37 years? And this is something that I really want the followers of Mike Gendron to realize. Either Mike Gendron's story has lies in it, or Mike Gendron, for 35 to 37 years, did not have the mental capacity to realize, hey, that book they're reading to me is the very same book that I was told not to read. But why are they able to read it to me, but I can't read it myself? In both situations, the words from the Bible are getting into my head. Something doesn't add up here. So yeah, if you're a follower of Mike Gendron, you're either listening to a guy who lies, or a guy who could not muster up for 35 to 37 years enough common sense to figure out the simplest of equations. This plus this does not equal this. Believing that you should never read the Bible while being read the Bible is not a sound teaching. Now, Mike might try to save face here and be like, hey, well, no, when they were reading at Mass, the priest, he would explain, like, what the readings were. That's why we could hear it at Mass, because the, the priest was going to tell us what the readings were about in the homily. We had the homily. So it was safe for them to read it to me right then, because they were going to explain it right then. But to that, I have two things to say. First off, if that's the case, Mike, if you thought you could be read the Bible because the priest was going to tell you right then and there what it meant, you did mention that you had an uncle who was a priest. My uncle was a Roman Catholic priest for 58 years. and Your uncle? That's right. <laughs> Here you see a picture of my uncle, Father Charles. I called my uncle who was a Roman Catholic priest. I would call my uncle the priest up. My uncle the priest responded. My uncle the priest said, growing up with an uncle as a Roman Catholic priest. So Mike had access to a priest. Couldn't Mike just read his Bible while sitting next to his uncle and been like, okay, I read that verse. Can you tell me, like, what does that mean? I don't, I don't understand this. Honor your father and mother? Why is that so cryptic? And why are you so small? You're such a little guy. Here, you, you come sit next to the Bible. That's adorable. What is this saying? I, I don't get it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Like, what is the author writing a puzzle book or something? This is just blowing up my mind. It's so confusing. And that brings us to the second thing I want to talk about, because as mentioned before, in the Mass, there's something called the homily. So there's the three readings, and then the priest comes up and he gives a homily. Now, homilies aren't like, okay, this is what we just read, and this is exactly what these things mean. But oftentimes during the homily, the priest does try to explain the readings in some way, even if it's just telling a story that's somehow related to the readings that we just heard. Now, remember, Mike heard at least 5,460 readings from the Bible. But that number is based on 35 years, so let's cut that down to just the years between 10 and 21. So we've got an 11-year period here, starting when Mike is 10 years old, going to when he's 21 years old. I'm sure you could do listening comprehension pretty well before the age of 10. I'm just giving Mike the benefit of the doubt here. Maybe he was a really slow learner. But yeah, from age 10 to 21, Mike would have heard at least 1,716 readings from the Bible. So my question to Mike, and this is the question that his followers should ask him too, is during those years, when listening comprehension should have been no problem for you, and you were supposedly this practicing Catholic listening to 1,716 readings from the Bible, that's at least three readings from the Bible per week. Was there never a moment at Mass where you heard the person reading the Bible to you and you thought, hey, pretty sure I understood what that meant. And then did the priest go up there and give his homily and explain the readings in a way that made you realize, hey, I did know what that meant because the Bible is full of very easy to understand readings. There's complicated stuff in there too, don't get me wrong, but there's a lot of stuff in the Bible that just isn't that difficult to grasp. So if someone's going to Mass between the ages of 10 and 21, and they hear all those readings, the likelihood is pretty high that you're gonna understand a good amount of things that are being read to you as they're being read to you and not just because the priest explained it to you. For example, let's play a game. If you go to the website for the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops, then you can find a calendar there that has the daily readings. So let's go to September 17th, that's this upcoming weekend. The first reading starts with wrath and anger are hateful things, yet the sinner hugs them tight. I wonder what that could mean. Could it possibly mean that wrath and anger are hateful things? And maybe this part about the sinner hugging them tight means that the sinner will commonly practice wrath and anger? The vengeful will suffer the Lord's vengeance, for he remembers their sins in detail. Is this seriously that complicated? Who's going to suffer the Lord's vengeance? The vengeful. Does the Lord remember people's sins in detail? Sure seems it. Forgive your neighbor's injustice. This is too easy. Let's go to the next reading. Brothers and sisters, none of us lives for oneself, and no one dies for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For this is why Christ died and came to life, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. So this reading literally has explanations right inside of it. None of us lives for oneself, and no one dies for oneself. Why is the author saying that? Because if we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. 
So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. Hence the reason why the author just said to brothers and sisters that no one lives for oneself and no one dies for oneself. The author even explains, for this is why Christ died and came to life, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Let's go to the gospel and see if we can figure that mystery out. Peter approached Jesus and asked him, whoa, 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 wait a second. Who approached who? Somebody get me a priest. The text clearly says that Peter approached Jesus, but I'm not sure what that means. No, really, this isn't complicated. Peter approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but 77 times. So if Mike Gendron was read this at Mass, which he should have been if he's telling the truth here and he went to Mass every weekend, but this is just a conversation. So if Mike couldn't hear this conversation and understand what this conversation was about, then that's not a problem understanding the Bible. That's a problem understanding basic English. Like seriously, what is so hard to understand about this? Peter asked the Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive? As many as seven times? And Jesus answered him, I say to you, not seven times, but 77 times. We're then told that Jesus goes on to liken the kingdom of heaven to a king who decided to settle accounts with his servants. Jesus says that when the king began the accounting, a debtor was brought before him who owed him a huge amount. Since he had no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold, along with his wife, his children, and all his property in payment of the debt. Is everyone able to grasp what's happening here? The guy couldn't pay back his debt by normal means, so a different solution was proposed. Rocket science. What happened next? We're told that at that, the servant fell down, did him homage, and said, be patient with me and I will pay you back in full. Okay, is anyone lost yet? Do we know what's happening here? The servant seems to want more time. The servant seems to want to pay back the debt in full. Moved with compassion, the master of the servant let him go and forgave him the loan. If anyone would like to pause the video, go into the comments, and let us know what you think this part of the Bible means without consulting a priest, feel free to try it. Did the master of that servant let him go and forgive him the loan? Was the master of the servant perhaps moved with compassion? These are questions that I want answers to because currently I am not in the vicinity of a priest and therefore cannot decipher this complex information. When that servant had left, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized him and started to choke him, demanding, pay back what you owe. Falling to his knees, his fellow servant begged him, be patient with me and I will pay you back. But he refused. You know what, I'm gonna stop here because I think we get the point. Also, because I want everyone to go to church this weekend. Even if you're not Catholic, this is my invite to you to go to the Mass and have the rest of this reading read to you. Don't read it for yourself, get that Mike Gendron experience. Convince yourself that you're not allowed to read the Bible, but someone else can read it to you. And while you're in that delusional mindset, Sit there at Mass, have this Gospel reading read to you, and see if you can understand it before the priest explains it. Report back in the comments, let us know how you did. The point is, the Bible is not too complicated to understand. Now this coming weekend's readings were actually exceptionally easy, so let me see if I can find something that's a little more complicated. We'll hop to the weekend after that. Reading number two, it says, Brothers and sisters, Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, life is Christ, and death is gain. If I go on living in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me, and I do not know which I shall choose. I am caught between the two. I long to depart this life and be with Christ, for that is far better, yet that I remain in the flesh is more necessary for your benefit. Only conduct yourselves in a way worthy of the gospel of Christ." So there's a reading that is not quite as clear right off the bat. As it goes on, it does get more clear what the author is talking about. They're trying to decide between two things. They're kind of caught between the two. On one hand, they want to depart this life and be with Christ because that's far better. But on the other hand, if they remain in the flesh, it's more necessary for the benefit of the people he's writing to. And then the last part, super straightforward, conduct yourselves in a way worthy of the gospel of Christ. So yeah, there are parts of the Bible that are not as straightforward as other parts. But as we can see in the readings we looked at just now, there's plenty of stuff in the Bible that does not require a priest to understand. So let's go back to Mike's little story here. According to Mike, he never read the Bible because he was told to never try to read or understand it. According to Mr. Gendron, he was told it was too difficult. But if Mike's story is actually true, if that's the reason why Mike never read the Bible all those years, then wouldn't that mean that Mike Gendron never understood a single Bible reading as it was read to him? Because it seems like either that's the case, or Mike failed to use his common sense. The reason I say this is because according to Mike's story, he went to church regularly, sometimes daily. If that's true, if Mike was actually the practicing Catholic that he claims to have been, then he would have heard at least 1,716 readings from the Bible from the age of 10 to 21. 
a period in time when Mr. Gendron should have been capable enough to do some basic listening comprehension. So there's two options here. Either Mike Gendron sat in church week after week, sometimes daily, heard the Bible being read to him, and never understood a single thing. Not until a priest told him what it meant. Or Mike Gendron sat in church listening to the Bible being read to him weekly, sometimes daily. And he did occasionally pick up on things and be like, okay, I understand what that means. And then the priest explained what it meant and he's like, yeah, that's, that's kind of what I thought it meant too. So if Mike Gendron is actually telling people the truth, then those are our options. Either Mike had the Bible read to him on thousands of occasions and he never understood a single part of it without the assistance of a priest, or Mike had the Bible read to him on thousands of occasions and at least once in a while he did understand what the Bible was saying before a priest explained it to him. Here's the thing though, if it was this first option where Mike didn't understand a single reading from the Bible as it was read to him, then are we supposed to believe that Mr. Gendron's listening comprehension skills are just terrible, but his reading comprehension skills are impeccable? Like seriously, did the guy go 35 to 37 years hearing the Bible being read to him thousands of times and never understand any of it, but then at age 35 or 37, he cracked open a Bible and he's like, oh, this makes sense, I get it. Because think of the story Mike's trying to sell here. He's saying he was his practicing Catholic who would not just go to church weekly, but also on occasions, daily. If that's true, he had the Bible read to him thousands of times. Are we really supposed to believe that Mr. Gendron is so bad at listening comprehension that he just didn't understand any of that, but then when he read the Bible for himself, he just got it? Like Mike, if your story is correct and your listening comprehension really is this terrible, then can you explain to everyone why we're supposed to believe that someone actually said this to you? Because Mike, if your story is correct, it seems like you're only good at reading stuff and then understanding it. If someone's speaking to you, like how on these thousands of occasions people were speaking to you, they were reading the Bible to you and you didn't understand it. If you couldn't understand the Bible, as it was read to you, then how are we supposed to believe that you actually understood this as it was told to you? How do we know you're not misquoting these people? Because if option one is the case, then we're living in a world where Mike Gentry can have the Bible read to him thousands of times and he just, he doesn't get it. But then he can read it himself and understand it. So Mike, unless the people that you're saying said these things, wrote them down on a piece of paper and handed them to you to read, then how are we supposed to believe that they actually said these things? Because if option one is correct, then your track record with listening comprehension is crap. And there's no reason to believe that anyone actually told you these things. For all we know, these could be misinterpretations of what was actually said. Now let's say option one is not the case. Let's say it's option two. Let's say Mike's listening comprehension isn't that disastrous, so these quotes could be true. Someone could have told Mr. Gendron these things that are not Catholic Christian teachings, but they're just things that those people just decided to tell Mike. Okay, I can believe that, but what I can't believe is that Mike Gendron would hear things from the Bible, understand them, and still cling to this ridiculous teaching. So if we go with option two, if Mike did understand readings from the Bible as they were read to him before a priest explained it to him, then why on earth would Mr. Gendron continue to believe that he should not try to read or understand the Bible? Because if option two is correct and Mike discovered that he could understand what the Bible was saying before the priest explained it to him, then common sense says this teaching is not accurate. If Mike is understanding parts of the Bible without the assistance of a priest, then it's not true that he should never try to read or understand the Bible without the assistance of a priest. In case you were wondering why we decided to go with this 10 to 21 age range here, that's because we figured 11 years was more than enough time for Mr. Gendron to realize, hey, I'm understanding the Bible without the assistance of a priest, so this teaching right here probably doesn't make sense. So maybe I can read the Bible seeing as I'm already understanding parts of the Bible. And then what I don't understand, I'll just ask my uncle. You good there? So this 11 year period already seemed like more than enough time Apparently though, it took Mr. Gendron 14 more years after the age of 21 before he realized, I don't have to listen to this anymore. So anyway, those are the two options and I'd love to hear from Mr. Gendron on which one is true. So which is it, Mike? Is it option one? Did you have the Bible read to you thousands of times and yet you never understood a single part of it without being assisted by a priest? And if that is the case, Mike, are we supposed to believe that you just miraculously understand the Bible now because you're reading it and it's not being read to you? Or is it option two? Did you actually understand things that were being read to you from the Bible before the priest explained it? And if it is option two, can you explain to us why you didn't have the common sense to realize that this teaching was flawed? If someone really told you to never try to read the Bible or understand it because it was too difficult and you needed a priest to interpret it for you, then when you were sitting in mass having the Bible read to you and you were understanding parts of the Bible as it was read to you before the priest explained it to you, that's when common sense should have kicked in. That's when you should realize that this teaching is not accurate. If you are understanding the Bible without needing a priest to interpret it for you, then it's not too difficult and it seems like the normal person would think, hey, maybe I can read this thing. 
Now, I don't believe that Mike Gendron's story is all true to begin with. I think he's telling lies, like actually telling lies. I think he's aware that what he's saying is not true and he's saying it anyway. But the point I'm making in this video is if his story was actually true, then these are our two options. Mike either lacked the mental capacity to ever understand a single reading from the Bible as it was read to him for 35 years, or Mike was understanding the Bible as it was read to him, but for 35 years he didn't have the common sense to get rid of this teaching that he claims to have based his never reading the Bible on. Again though, I'm pretty convinced that Mike Gendron is just a liar, and I don't call people liars often. Like, we've covered a lot of Protestants on this channel, and we talk about how they're teaching falsely. They're saying things that are not true, they're saying things that are false. It's not typical for us to call them a liar, because in most cases when we're talking about Protestants, we believe that they believe that what they're saying is true. We don't think that they're knowingly sharing information that they know is false. That's not the same for Mike Gendron. The things he's saying just don't make sense. Now there is the possibility that Mike Gendron is just not a smart person. And maybe all this stuff actually did happen in Mike's life, and Mike made decisions based on this information that just were not intelligent decisions. Yeah, that is a possibility. But I don't think Mike Gendron, and I don't think anyone, would be that stupid. So because I respect Mike Gendron's intelligence, and I think he is a smart guy, that's why I think he's a liar. But Mike, if we get this wrong, if you're actually telling the truth, and you just for 35 years made terrible decisions, please let us know, because we don't want to keep thinking you're a liar if the case is that you were just an idiot. We'll call you whatever you are. So if you could just hook us up with that answer, we'd greatly appreciate it. Now, for the record, unlike what Mr. Gendron may or may not have been told, Catholic Christians are encouraged to read their Bible. Today you can even read this teaching in the Catechism of the Catholic Christian Church. There's a section called Sacred Scripture in the Life of the Church, and there it says the Church forcefully and specifically exhorts all the Christian faithful to learn the surpassing knowledge of Jesus Christ by frequent reading of the Divine Scriptures. Ignorance of the Scriptures is ignorance of Christ. That's a whole heck of a lot different than what Mike Gendron may or may not have been told. Because don't get me wrong, the Bible can be difficult to understand, but it is not too difficult to understand. A great example of this can actually be found in the Bible. In Acts chapter 8, we can read about how an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Rise and go to the south, to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a desert place. And he rose and went. And there was an Ethiopian, a eunuch, a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who was in charge of all her treasure. He had come to Jerusalem to worship, and was returning seated in his chariot, and he was reading the prophet Isaiah. And the Spirit said to Philip, Go over and join this chariot. Let's pause for a second here because notice that the Ethiopian is reading the prophet Isaiah. So Mike Gendron was going off of this advice and never reading his Bible because someone told him not to read it. Meanwhile, in the Bible, there's a story about a guy who's reading writings that are in the Bible. And as this guy is reading, the Spirit said to Philip, Go over and join this chariot. But you'll notice that the Spirit didn't go on to say and knock that book out of his hand because he shouldn't be reading it. That should be on a coffee table collecting dust. Seriously, if Mike's not lying to us, I don't know how he went 35 years not realizing that this teaching was complete nonsense. I don't know if Mike Gendron just went 35 years without ever hearing or understanding this Bible passage, but when the Bible talks about people reading things from the Scriptures, that should be a good sign that maybe this teaching is not correct. The Spirit says to Philip, Go over and join this chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet, and asked, Do you understand what you are reading? And he said, How can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. We are then given the passage of scripture that the Ethiopian was reading, and we are told that the eunuch said to Philip, About whom, I ask, does the prophet say this? About himself, or about someone else? Then Philip opened his mouth, and beginning with this scripture, he told him the good news about Jesus. So the Ethiopian was reading the scriptures. And yeah, when Philip asked the guy, do you understand what you are reading, and he said, how can I, unless someone guides me, that could sound similar to what Mike was told about the Bible being too difficult to understand. But as you read on in the passage, you realize that the eunuch wasn't completely lost. He didn't understand everything about this section that he was reading, but he did realize that it was something that was written about someone. His question, though, is who is this written about? He asked Philip, about whom does the prophet say this? About himself, or about someone else? So what can we learn from this? Well, one, you can read your Bible. Two, you might not understand everything that you're reading in your Bible. Things could be a little difficult to understand if you're just reading it on your own without any help. And three, if you do have questions about something you're reading in the Bible, you can ask somebody who knows what's in the Bible. For instance, you can ask someone like Philip, who was a member of the one and only Christian church that Christ created. So as mentioned repeatedly, I don't believe anyone actually told Mike this. They might have told him that the Bible can be difficult to understand, but I doubt anyone said it was too difficult to understand. And they may have told Mike to be careful when reading the Bible, but I doubt they told him to never read his Bible. Unless, of course, the person who said this to Mike actually knew Mike well, and they had seen him read other books, and he just was way off base as to what they meant. So they're like, hey, 
You can't understand a pocket for corduroy. You are not going near that Bible, all right? You're telling me this is about space travel? You read this and thought it was about space travel. Yeah, you should stay away from books. That's like the only scenario I can think of as to why someone would say this to Mike Gendron. Maybe they just knew him well enough and knew that he was terrible at reading comprehension. Anyway, Mr. Gendron has other stories out there too, which I also believe contain lies. Like he tells a story about his uncle. I called my uncle who was a Roman Catholic priest and I said, why does the Bible say something different than the Catholic Church teaches on salvation? I remember calling my uncle the priest. I asked him a very simple question. I said, why does the Bible say one thing and the Catholic Church teaches us directly opposite? I would call my uncle the priest up and I'd say, why does the Bible say one thing and the Catholic Church teaches the direct opposite? He said, well, that's not true, Mike. Give me an example. And so I said, well, in Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. He said, Mike, that's not true. Give me an example. I said, well, in Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. He said, Mike, that's just not true. I said, well, let me give you an example. Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. My uncle, the priest, responded and said, Mike, God doesn't really mean what he's saying there. Do you know what he said? He said, Mike. God doesn't really mean what he's saying there. <clears throat> My uncle, the priest said, Mike, God doesn't really mean what he's saying there. <clears throat> you know, I, I did the wrong thing. I believed him. I don't know if Mike's uncle is still around or if Mike's uncle ever put out like a statement as to his side of that conversation. But if anyone knows of that, I'd love to hear Mike's uncle's side of the story and include that in the video sometime. But in either case, either Mike's uncle said something that was incorrect or, and this is the option that I think is probably much more likely, Mike Gendron is lying about his uncle. And if that's the case, what a lousy thing for an FU to do. Now, as for the claim that Mr. Gendron's making about Ephesians 2, we have several videos on Ephesians 2. There is nothing in this passage that conflicts with Catholic Christian teaching. If you want to learn more about how this passage fits in perfectly with Catholic Christian teaching, we recommend this video. We've gotten a lot of comments on it about how it explained the topic well, so hopefully if you're a Protestant who has been duped into believing that Ephesians 2 goes against Catholic Christian teaching, this video can help you out. Here's what Mr. Gendron has to say about Ephesians 2 and Catholic Christianity. My uncle the priest responded and said, Mike, God doesn't really mean what he's saying there. Wow. I thought, wow, how can this priest know what God really means? So I continued to read and there was just no way to reconcile the two. Yeah, the second half of that statement is false. It may be true that Mr. Gendron continued to read, but it is not true that there is no way to reconcile the two. Feel free to check out our videos on the topic. We recommend starting with this one. They are linked in the description of the video. Hope they can help. Now this video was a little different compared to how we normally respond to Protestants. Usually we're taking teachings that they're giving and explain how those teachings don't make sense. In this particular video, we didn't really look at the teachings that Mr. Gendron is teaching about Christianity. We think that 98 Rush Rule sums up Mr. Gendron's teachings pretty well when he calls them garbage. We don't think Mr. Gendron is that gifted of a teacher. We think that as Reddish Brown Horse pointed out, if you know how to be a Christian already, then you're going to recognize his teachings to be false. We have our Christian versus Protestant series where we look at Protestants who are doing a much better job, in our opinion, than Mr. Gendron is doing at teaching Protestantism. It seems to us that Mr. Gendron's main thing is that he's a storyteller. Are those stories true? I don't think so, but if they are, it's not good news for Mr. Gendron. If his stories are true, they don't help him at all. I get that he's probably telling the stories because he thinks, oh, I'm going to say this about the Catholic Church and people are going to be like, oh, they didn't let him read his Bible. He wanted to read his Bible, but they didn't, they didn't let him. I never opened it for 35 years because... The priest said it's too difficult to understand, don't even bother to read it. Bad Catholic Church, how dare you do that to Mike? I get that angle of telling the story, but Mike, when you're telling these stories, the logical conclusion, if they're true, is that you're an idiot. Now again, I say that thinking that Mike Gendron is a smart guy. I don't think he's the moron that his stories make him out to be. You know, I, I did the wrong thing, I believed him. I think he's a liar. And I think he's a liar who didn't think through his stories to realize, oh, yeah, I do look pretty dumb if I actually believed for 35 years that I couldn't read my Bible while somebody's reading me the Bible for 35 years. Yeah, the rocket scientist couldn't figure that out. Again, check out Joe Heschmeyer's video. Joe puts more of a focus on Mike's teachings, though Joe also seems to agree that Mike Gendron is lying to people. The title of the video is Ex-Catholic Exposes the Twisted, all caps, Teachings of the Catholic Church by a fellow by the name of Mike Gendron, who claims to have been a former devout Catholic. He just says the same false claims over and over and over again, despite them being debunked, despite them being clearly false. 
And so this leads to one of two possibilities. Either he's so unaware of what's going on that he doesn't realize he's getting basic factual things wrong, he's not listening to any of the Catholics who are correcting him, he's just oblivious, totally incompetent to handle anything about what Catholics believe. The other possibility is that he doesn't care about the truth, that he's lying about it. I'd like to thank everyone who left comments suggesting that we do a video on Mike Gendron. For everyone watching, if you have any suggestions for future videos, let us know in the comments below. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell and all. If you want to support us at hbchristian.com, we'd very much appreciate that. Thank you to all of our supporters over there for helping make these videos possible. This is How To Be Christian. You all have a great day.